Hi students, these notes are going to cover 9-9 and 9-10. We need to understand 9-9 before we can do 9-10. 9-9 um, is called the Introduction to Trigonometry, also known as trig. Our essential question is how can I use the side lengths of right triangles to write trigonometric ratios? After we learn how to do this, we will learn how to use that to help us find missing sides of triangles. So trigonometric ratios are something that you'll learn about here very um, on the surface. We're going to just have an introduction to it, but you'll use this a lot more in pre-calculus and in physics. The three types of trigonometric ratios we will be focusing on here are sine, cosine, and tangent. The trigonometric ratios are ratios between the sides of a right triangle as they relate to certain acute angles of the right triangle. There are two acute angles in a right triangle, and so these ratios are based off of the position of the sides with respect to one of those acute angles. So down here in our example, when we look at these three ratios, we will be looking at them with respect to this angle A down here. The sine of an angle, the cosine of an angle, and a tangent of an angle can all be found by using the sides. So there are three basic side names with respect to where that angle is. Across from that angle is this other leg, which we call the opposite leg because it is opposite that angle. The leg that touches that angle, the other leg, is called the adjacent leg, which we'll abbreviate with ADJ. Adjacent means touching. And then the hypotenuse, of course, is across from the right angle, and that is right here. The hypotenuse is always going to be the same, regardless of which acute angle you're looking at. So if we were to write these three ratios with respect to angle A, the definition of the sine of angle A goes like this. First of all, the abbreviation for sine is S-I-N. Please don't say sin, it's sine. We would say sine of angle A is going to be equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So whatever numbers or expressions you have for those two sides, you would just put there. The cosine of angle A is written like this. Cosine is represented by COS. Please don't say cos. Always say cosine. So the cosine of angle A is equal to the adjacent leg's length over the hypotenuse's length. And then the tangent of this particular angle A, we're going to represent with tan, T-A-N, but we're going to say tangent. And its definition is the opposite length, or the opposite leg, over the adjacent leg. It does not involve the hypotenuse. So all of these, you're going to need to remember and you can remember them really easily, this part in particular, actually more so this part. You can remember these definitions like this. It's a little saying called so ka It goes like this. There's the so, that means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The ka, oops. Hold on. The ka looks like this. It means that the cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. And the toa looks like this. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So if you can remember so, ka, toa, it'll help you remember these three ratios. These three ratios are also on your formula chart. In this example, we're going to be finding two things, the cosine of angle A and then the tangent of angle B. So let's start with the cosine of angle A. 
this ratio will be written with respect to angle A. So we're going to label the opposite hypotenuse and adjacent sides with respect to this angle. Across from angle A is the 4, that will be our opposite side. I'm just going to put an O. The 3, which is the other leg that's touching angle A, we're going to call A for adjacent. And then the 5, of course, is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse regardless of whether we're looking at angle A or angle B. So we're going to use these three to write our cosine of angle A. Now if you remember the so ka toa, the ka reminds us that cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So all we have to do is pick those two sides. Since it's A over H, we're going to do 3 over 5. So the cosine of angle A is equal to 3 over 5. That's its ratio. Now right now you're probably wondering why we're doing this. You will see later how this becomes helpful. Let's go ahead now and try to find the tangent of angle B. So for the tangent of angle B, we're going to be looking at the sides with respect to angle B. So we're going to have to relabel the A, the O, and the H. Across from angle B is the 3, so now the 3 is the O, the opposite side. The 4 now is the adjacent leg, not the opposite. And of course, the 5 is still going to be the hypotenuse. Because we're trying to find the tangent of angle B, we need to remember what tangent is equal to. That's the TOA part of SOCA TOA. TOA stands for tan equals opposite over adjacent. Our opposite side is the 3. Our adjacent side is the 4. So we will put 3 over 4. So the tangent of angle B is equal to the ratio of 3 over 4. And that's it. In this example, we will be finding the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A, and then again the sine, cosine, and tangent from angle B's perspective. So let's first start from angle A's perspective. We're going to label our sides with O, A, and H. Across from angle A is our 8, so that's our O for opposite. The 15 is the other leg that's adjacent or touching angle A, and of course the 17 is the hypotenuse. So remember what, how to find these. And if you want to write off to the side, so ka toa, it'll kind of help you. And you could put this at the top of your paper whenever you're doing these types of problems. So since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or O over H, we're just going to put 8 over 17. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, or A over H, so we will put 15 over 17. And the tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, is O over A, or 8 over 15. Now we will find these three ratios again, but from the perspective of angle B. So we're going to relabel our O, A, and our H. Now our O is the 15. That's our opposite side. Our adjacent side to angle B would be this 8, this other leg. And then the hypotenuse, of course, is still the 17. So for the sine of angle B, which is opposite over hypotenuse, or O over H, we will put 8 over 17. I'm sorry, opposite, looking at the wrong color, looking at orange. The opposite is 15 over the H, which is 17. The cosine of angle B, cosine is A over H, or 8 over 17. And tangent is O over A, or 15 over 8. Now, I want you to take a look at these six ratios for this one triangle. And if you compare the angle A's ratios with angle B's ratios, you will notice that these two ratios are the same and these two ratios are the same. If you look at the tangents ratios, they are reciprocals of each other. So 
when you're asked to do these problems, you could possibly link these or, or for example, if I know the cosine of angle B is 8 over 17 and I need that ratio of 8 over 17, I could also use the sine of angle A. Those two are going to mean the same thing. So for example, so let's try a few more. Now for this example, we need to find the sine of 30 degrees, the cosine of 30 degrees, and the tangent of 60 degrees. Now so far, instead of these angle measures, we just had an angle name, like angle A or angle B. We haven't had actual measures, but we can figure this out. We also don't have a picture. So what we need to do is think about some things we've learned in the past. We've already learned about triangles that have acute angles of 30 and 60 and then the right angle. So let's go ahead and sketch a 30, 60, 90. These trig ratios only work with right angles, so you can be sure that if one of the acute angles is 30, the other acute angle is 60. So let's go ahead and first find the sine of 30. I'm going to do that in red. That's from this angle. We're going to need to label our sides O, H, and A. The opposite side would be here. The adjacent leg would be here. And the hypotenuse would be here. Now, for a 30, 60, 90, we have expressions that we use for these three sides. We know the ratio of the sides. And since we're creating ratios, it's not important that we know exactly what these sides equal. Knowing the ratios would be just fine. So in our 30, 60, 90 triangles, the side across from the 30 is represented by the expression x. The side across from the 60 degree angle is represented by the expression x squared of 3. And the side across from the 90 is represented with 2x. So we're going to actually use these instead of numbers when we write these ratios. So for sine of 30, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or O over H. We will put x over 2x. And then if I look at this ratio, I can simplify it. Since there's an x in the numerator and the denominator, I can cancel those. I have nothing left in the numerator but an invisible one. Don't forget that that one is always going to be there. And then my denominator is 2. So the sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half. Now this is for any 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The ratio is always going to be 1 half with respect to the 30 degree angle. For the cosine of 30, remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse or A over H. So I'm going to use those expressions. For A, we have x squared of 3. For H, we have 2x. Again, I can cancel these x's, which allows us to simplify to square root of 3 over 2. So the ratio for the uh, cosine of a 30 degree angle, no matter how big the triangle is, will always have a ratio of square root of 3 to 2. Now for the tangent of 60 degrees, we need to look at the triangle from a different perspective. So let's go ahead and look at it from the 60 degree angle. We're going to have to relabel our sides. This x squared of 3 is now my opposite side and the x is now my adjacent. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse. So when you're switching from one acute angle to the other, the only things that get flip-flopped are the O and the A. The hypotenuse stays put. For tangent, Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite from angle 60 would be the x squared of 3. And the adjacent would be the x. So if I simplify that ratio, I can cross out the x's. There is an invisible 1 down here with the x. I could either leave it as square root of 3, or if I want to keep it in the ratio form, square root of 3 over 1 would be just fine. For this last example in 9.9, .9, we are to find the sine of angle C. However, if you look at this triangle, there are no right angles. Instead, we've got an isosceles triangle. If we were to draw in an auxiliary line right here, the altitude slash median, 
not only would it intersect this segment BC at a right angle, which is good because now we have some right triangles, but it would also bisect that 10 into two fives. Remember medians, cut the side in half. So if we were to look at this, if we think about what sine is, the sine of angle C, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the O is going to be this side, if I draw my arrow, it's going to be that altitude or median, and the hypotenuse would be the 13. Those are the only two I'm concerned about. The 5 is going to be my adjacent, but I don't think I'll really need that. In order to find that, though, I would need to know that altitude or median. Now, at this point, I don't know it, but if I look at that right triangle, I do know two of its sides. I know 5 and 13. So I know that I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the altitude, and then once I have that, I know the O, which I can use in my ratio. So let's go off to the side and use the Pythagorean theorem. If I'm looking at this right triangle, the 13, of course, is my hypotenuse, which, which would be C. I don't know why I'm labeling with H. That would be my C. The A, we could call the 5. And then the B would be what we are trying to find. So if we set it up, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is 5, so 5 squared. B we're trying to find and C is 13. 5 squared is 25. 13 squared is 169. I need to now subtract 25 from both sides to get the B squared by itself. B squared equals 144. So to find B, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. B is going to be plus or minus 12, but of course I need to use the positive value because we're talking about a length here. So now I know that B has a length of 12, and 12, that altitude slash median, represents my O. I already know my H to be 13, so since sine is O over H, I can write it as 12 over 13. And that's it. So I really want you to focus on these ratios. Remember the so Katoa to help you. Remember you can only find sine, cosine, or tangent with respect to one of the two acute angles in a right triangle. Never from the perspective of the right angle. Okay, so I've changed my mind about making these notes over 9, 9, and 9, 10. I feel like they're already pretty long. Um, here are the 9, 9 homework problems. We will work on these in class, though, but if you'd like to get a head start, go for it. We'll learn 9, 10 in the next lesson.